No joiner? No problem. Welcome to this edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. Hi folks, I'm Jeff Ferris. Welcome to my shop. Today, instead of taking a closer look at a woodpecker tool, we're gonna to take a real close look at a woodpecker's tool in action. I'm gonna show you how to use your router table as a joiner. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our new videos. Okay, let's get started. So the technique I'm gonna show you today has been covered in a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, nobody's ever specifically used a woodpecker's router table, which is what we're gonna to do today. I'm gonna show you some unique features of ours that make this really simple. Uh, but most of the people that talk about doing this technique are talking about doing it instead of owning a joiner. I'm gonna show you that even if you do have a joiner, you still may wanna try this. So even if you have a joiner, here are a couple of situations where using your router as a joiner instead of your joiner might be a really good idea. Uh, first, look at the crazy grain in this piece of uh, figured maple. The ripples are going all over the place uh, and we're gonna get some tear out, I think, when we try and run that across the joiner. Uh, the other thing is, this board is about six and a half inches wide and with the standard joiner fence, it's just a little tippy, okay? When we get to the router table, it'll be horizontal and it'll be a lot more stable. But let's take a look at that cut and see what we get on our joiner. Okay, freshly sharpened knives that I set. I know I've got them just right, but because of that ripple grain, you can see that we've got all kinds of tear out along our joint line. All right, same board, but now we're gonna cut it on the router table instead of the joiner, and let's see what the edge looks like after that. What I'm using is a solid carbide spiral Cutter. Now those spiral cutters shear the fibers as they're cutting. They're also razor sharp. So let's see what that does. You can see that the cut is flawless. The only places where you see any tear out is where it's left over from the joiner. Also, I hope you noticed how easy it was working with this flat on the table compared to trying to keep it tight up against a fence vertically. Okay, so let me show you how to set this up. So the theory of edge joining is that the cutter is perfectly in line with the outfeed table, and then the infeed table is set back from that. So as you're feeding into this, the cutter is gonna take away everything that isn't in line with the outfeed table. So there's several ways to do this, and it all depends on how your woodpecker's router table is equipped. I'm gonna try and go through all the different options. Now there are three different ways to set up the offset fence on your woodpecker router table. Uh, the way that most people set it up is they put the offset module on the outfeed side, the fixed base on the infeed side, and that is sort of the standard configuration. Uh, you can also do it the other way around. This is the way that uh, Rich Hummel, the owner of the company, thinks it should be set up, and that is with the offset module on the infeed side, the fixed base on the outfeed side. The third option is the way I've set mine up, and that is don't fight about it, just put an offset module on both sides. That way you've got the best of both worlds. So pretend this is the traditional fixed base. What we're gonna do is take the two steel rods that come with the offset base 
and we're going to use those as spacers and we're going to put those behind the fence between the base and the fence and then we're going to bring that back tight and lock it up it'd be exactly the same with the fixed base as it is with the fully adjustable offset base so what we're going to do now is unlock the fence and we're going to move it back until my straight edge just kisses the router bit. Now we'll lock it down. And then the amount that you're going to cut off with each joiner pass is the distance between the outfeed fence and the infeed fence. Now that's a pretty healthy cut. Let's not take quite that much. So let's take our offset module on the infeed side and use that to establish the depth of cut. We'll set that up for oh, right around an eighth of an inch. So now we're gonna take some scrap stock and make a test cut. See this little gap between my scrap stock and the fence? That tells me that my depth of cut is a little bit too deep and I need to move my fence closer out toward the front. So I'm gonna pull the left end of the fence out a little bit and we're gonna lock it up and make another test cut. So you can see that time, instead of having a gap, I can't get past the fence. That tells me that I moved it too much. So we'll sneak it back a little bit. Okay, you can see my different steps here. That was way too deep, got most of it, and then we've got right on line with our outfeed fence. So we'll tighten everything up, finish our cut, and double check it. All right, we've got a perfect snipe-free cut. No snipe on the beginning or the end of the cut. Just a perfect straight line. Now all that jockeying around that I was doing, adjusting the fence back and forth, would have been a heck of a lot easier if I just reached back here and used the micro adjuster to adjust the fence. But if you don't have that module on your fence, you can still do it, okay? It's just a whole bunch easier when you have that on there. Same thing with that adjustment with the offset module on the outfeed side, as well as the infeed side. That adjustment becomes just a very, very smooth motion of the fence up and down rather than trying to adjust the whole thing. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to accomplish the same thing. If you've got the very basic fence, it works just fine. You can speed things up a little bit by adding the micro adjust and a second offset module. Okay, so let's give this a test. I've got a couple of pieces of maple here that I want to glue together. These have the original straight out of the sawmill edge on them. We're going to run those across our joiner and get this ready to glue up. I'm going to mark it so I know which way I want to orient it. And now we'll make our cuts. Hey, we got a perfect glue line edge here. No tear out like we would have had on the joiner. And I know I've got it dead square too. Hope this is a technique that helps you in your shop with your woodpecker's router table. Hey, if you enjoyed the show today, be sure and give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscription button and the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our deep dives when we post it. Oh, one more thing. Hot off the press, we have 
Woodpeckers Woodworking. This is our catalog that has all of our products in it, plus feature articles that show you things like we looked at today. If you want to get one, we'll send you one free. Just go to our website, there's a link right below, and we'll take you to the ordering page so you can get a catalog in the mail. Hey folks, thanks for watching Deep Dive today. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time on Deep Dive.